Hey folks, welcome back for more Let's Play Stationeers. I apologize if I sound a little stuffed up. It's because I'm uh, a little stuffed up. It's that time of year. So, uh, this time we're going to be doing uh, the first part of our build on a materials processing facility out that way. But there are a few minor projects I want to take care of first, and uh, then I'll give you a breakdown on what I've been doing in the meantime off camera. So, let's get suited up. One thing that I did is I have actually done quite a bit of mining off camera. I have mined uh, a full Mark II mining belt of iron, silicon, and oxide, yes. Uh, I also turned on the cooling loop and vented down our hot waste tank before smelting that iron. Uh, there was a lot of nitrogen and stuff in there I wanted to capture, and I've mixed up a little bit more Atmo mix so we can have some to uh, keep things topped up in there. So, first thing I want to do, this right here has been a real pain. Every time I walk through here, I get hung on this. So we're going to move this over here. Let's take a quick moment and go ahead and do that. There we go. That should uh, improve things a bit as far as navigating through here. There, now it's ready. Okay, another thing I need to do. We're gonna move this waste return pump inside this wall. Pipe. 
So there's a reason for this. Uh, this pump is to pull the waste out of the uh, suit storage and CO2 filtration system in the workshop. However, we're going to be tying into this line and adding another connection. So we want to make sure that we're pulling all the waste from all of the sources. I think we're going to put this right here. That's all done. Now, one more task I would like to do. Uh, this is a pretty good system, but there's one possibly dangerous flaw here. Uh, this system serves two purposes. One is to hold the hot waste so we can use the heat from it, which is, you know, good. The other is to prevent hot waste from getting into our main storage and possibly igniting something. The dangerous flaw here is that suppose this tank gets cold enough to trigger the evacuation pump. So this pumps on, it's pumping this formerly hot waste into this tank. And then say I chuck something in that furnace over there. It introduces more hot gas. Uh, this logic system will turn that pump off as soon as the temperature rises, but not before there's a chance that something's going to get in here at uh, hundreds of degrees, and we don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a valve. All of our inputs to this system are going to be on one side of that valve. When this system turns that pump on, it's going to close this valve, so we can't accidentally have hot gasket into our main storage. Now that means that we're going to have to reprogram this, and I may tweak the temperatures and pressure settings too, but uh, we'll look at that in a minute. So this line is a an input, and then we have this one here. Yeah, let's go look at our code.
So we've uh, we've gone over this in detail in the past in the previous episode where we set up the system. Uh, what we're going to do going to create a new device. I think we're going to bump this temperature up to 293. That'll be 20 degrees Celsius. Then we'll leave the pressure at uh, 5. That's 5 kilopascals, I believe. And essentially... This is where we turn the pump on, and this section is where we turn it off. So anytime we turn it on, we want to turn the valve off first. And anytime we turn it off, then we want to turn the valve back on. After we turn off the pump, then we turn the valve on, not before. There we go. Go ahead and confirm that. We're going to add some comments to explain that this is version 2.0 and what changes we made. There we go. Confirm it again to make sure it's saved. Now this is saved as hot waste gas control, so we're going to create a new one. Save it and we'll publish. I'll try to remember to add a link to this uh, in the video description. Export it to the chip. I think we're good to go. Uh, 
pro tip. Don't lock your helmet until you close your helmet. It's uh, rough on the lungs. Okay, so we want to keep this uh, taut waist right now. So we're not going to test this. We're just going to... Well, well, we know that the code took because we've got the error message. Let's turn it off and set that up. It's looking for that valve. There we go. Oh, and the valve is on. Excellent. Now, in theory, before it turns that pump on, it should always turn the valve off. And vice versa. So that's pretty much everything. Uh, in addition to the mining I did, I also have done a couple of harvest and replants in here. Uh, probably going to let this slide for a while. We've got quite a bit of food stockpiled. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go hydrate and uh, have our parts together over there for the actual main event here. We'll uh, we'll take it from there. All right. So our main event here is the beginnings of a materials processing facility. Uh, we currently have our furnaces in a sort of temporary setup over there. Uh, this plan for this portion is going to be automating the arc furnace again, but more better and with an or drop off shoot. So let's look at our parts. Got uh, two stacks of steel frames, three stacks of steel sheets, uh, 40 or so flat walls, uh, eight floor gratings, 15 wall kits, uh, door, a vending machine, stack of plastic sheets, a handful of glass sheets, not many. A stacker, three sorters, our power connections, the controller and the transformer, and a battery. Nine logic I.O. chips, a logic switch, and uh, a silo, motherboard, sorter motherboard, and a computer for it, as well as a couple of consoles and a hash display a console card. Got three stacks of cable, a uh, little over one stack of heavy cable, bunch of regular pipe, bunch of liquid pipe, bunch of insulated pipe, and uh, this 90 shoots. We've also got this mining belt that we're going to use to test all this out once we get it set up, and a light we're going to use as an indicator for the arc furnace's power state. So to start with, let's go ahead and get our foundation. And we're going to need to do a little bit of uh, drill work to make us some room. Now that's a bit more than we really needed, but I plan to expand this building in the future, so. All right, we're gonna do a five by five grid here. We're going to weld up part of these, and some we're going to go ahead and fully weld up. All right. 
So these are fully welded because they're underneath the floor and the walls, and I don't expect to need to run anything under there. Part of the building we're making this episode is going to just be this corner. So it will be uh, a door here and other stuff in here. so we can get our power connections in there. pull up a yellow wire. Here we go. Now the building's powered. I think we're done with heavy cables, so we'll go ahead and put it over here. The spending machine is going to be basically our storage for our mining belts. And the way this is going to work is we're going to have a chute here. And this is where we'll drop our mining belts. Before I delve into this, I should probably hydrate. We'll be right back. Okay, so got a few 
a few stacks of shoots here. A stacker and three sorters. So this stacker has two, well, three different ways you can build. It's got a, a reversed version. And then the third way is an unloader. And that's what we want. Give it a little space because we're going to put some extra shoots in here to give it a little room in case we put in more shoots than it can handle immediately. Or more mining belts, rather. the mining belts will be unloaded and everything will be the belt included will come out of the unloader into our first sorter This will be our ore sorter. Now in the case of the ore sorter, it's going to take anything that is ore and whitelist it. Stuff on the whitelist will come out on the right side. Things that are not on that list will come out on the left side. That means the next thing we need to do is everything that's not ore goes back to the vending machine. this order, all of the ore items will come here. And this is going to be our ice sorter. All of our ices, water, volatiles, oxide, they'll all get pulled out by this one. So now everything that's ice will come out of the right side of this. Everything else will come out of here. And by this point, it should be all ores that aren't ices. But it will also include some things that we can't run through the arc furnace, because that's what this is going to feed. So we need a final sorter to pull out those. Actually, go ahead and 
put our ice crusher in place so we have room to work here. Or so we know how much room we have. Hmm. I believe I'm going to pull the ice crusher from over here. Now the ice crusher is a little slow, so we're going to give it a bit of a buffer with some pipes, or shoots in this case. Let's go ahead and grab those, we need more shoots. to our plumbing for this in a little bit. Now, the last sorter, as I said, its job is to pull out anything that we can't smelt in the arc furnace. So, it will sit... Sit right here. Now, its whitelist is going to be the things that we can't smelt, because at this point, the only thing coming in should be all ores minus ices. So everything else should be smeltable. Everything that we're going to be able to smelt is going to go into a silo to act as a buffer for the arc furnace. And all of the smeltables should be coming out of the left side of this. At this point, we don't have a proper storage system for any of this stuff. So for now, the things we can't smelt, we're just going to loop it back around and dump it in the floor. That ought to work. Yeah. 
Let's get our silo in place so we know where to run our shoots to. Okay, so that's got that set up. Let's, uh, let's bring those shoots over. Everything switched on. This is actually going to stay open all the time. Now, to control all these sorters, we need a computer with a sorter motherboard. Let's go ahead and get that set up. And before we go any further, let's go ahead and start wiring things up. Everything connected. We just need to run the power to that network.
Now we can go ahead and set up our sorting rules. In this case, the whitelist is just OR, which is handy. For our eye sorter, we need to pick the three eyes. And then lastly, the reject sorter. At this point, it should only be getting the remaining ores that are not ices. But we need to add the things that we can't smelt, which are coal, cobalt, and uranium at this point. And technically, charcoal, I think, is counted as an ore. But I don't intend to have charcoal going into this system. And that should have it set up. And once they are set up, you can turn that computer off. These will remember their settings once they've been set. So let's uh, have us a sip and we'll come back and maybe test this. Okay, I took a moment to do a quick uh, harvest and replant over at the greenhouse and eat a couple of tomatoes as well. So, we've got this set up. We should expect ices to go where they should, the smeltable ores to come here, things we can't smelt to come out here. It's not a setting, so we're not going to lose our ice if we test it. So let's go ahead and remove this. In this belt, we have, oh, uranium, iron, cobalt, gold, and coal. No ices. Let's, uh, let's grab something to put in there. All of our sorters should have something to test with. Let's make sure this is turned on.
Okay, I believe we are ready to test. The sun has set, so we won't lose our eyes. The orders are all on. Here we go. There's the uranium and the cobalt. There's our coal. I saw our ice drop out here. Our belt is in here. Okay. There's our ores. Excellent. Now that we have that working, let's go ahead and put that shoot back in place. wall too. Now, unlike the other buildings, this one's going to be largely built of frames. It gives me a place to hide some of the equipment. But again, this is only one corner of the building we'll be expanding with uh, future projects. Let's go ahead and get our plumbing in. start with bringing these gases from the ice pressure over to our atmospheric swarm. gases from the ice crusher into our system. We're going to need purple paint, and I am out. Let's take a moment to get some of that, because these are for our hot waste. Alright, I grabbed some red and black paint too, because this building I'm going to do in black with red accents. Like that.
Now, our arc furnace is going to live right here. Our vent should be right here. Okay, that ties that into this. And it's still on the outside of the safety valve. So we're good to go. Now the last thing is our water connection and that one's going to be kind of long. Removing this ice crusher from here. We can pull up all this pipe later. Maybe we'll do that now. We will leave this pump where it is, though. Get work around that. Alright, I think that's all the plumbing. You're getting quite the octopus here. Very industrial. Cue the nine inch nails. So now that the plumbing is done, let's uh let's work on that arc furnace. Now we could have scavenged some of these chips and shoots and other supplies here, but I wanted to make sure that this was still in the service in case we needed it while building, so yeah, I do believe I do need these. Though.
And again, we don't have our storage system available yet, so for now, everything this thing smelts is going to just drop out right here. that up one more. I think I can safely close up some of these frames. Go ahead and do that. guarantees I won't have to tear into those, but we'll see. I think I'll leave these white. Guess I need to do some wiring. that has power or not. It looks like it does. Good.
Yeah, that should have power. He shoots back in. logic going. So there are a couple of considerations here. One is that I'm using the arc furnace to smelt pretty much everything that can be smelted. Um, in the future we'll probably do an automated advanced furnace. Should be able to still use ingots for that. This isn't maybe as efficient but it allows us to capture those gases and it allows us to go ahead and automate smelting things. So we'll, we'll address that when we come to it, I guess. The other thing is I could control this with an IC10 chip. Uh, that's 50 watts of power uh, instead of the 90 or so that I'm about to use with these uh, IC10 with these logic chips. However, it actually would require all of the devices and possibly more than we can actually connect control with one IC10. Uh, also, this allows me to kind of logically control things and keep my head wrapped around the problem at hand. So, first thing we want to do, we want to get a power switch. And we're going to put that right there. Second thing is, we want a button to activate, just as we had over there. Also gonna have a console. And a LED display to show the quantity and what we're smelting at any given time.
go ahead and grab our hash card. Now we need several IO chips. Start by getting our power and activate connected. Hydration critical. And we'll wire those in too. Now the switch is going to output to the art furnace. Can't see it. Oh. Thought I had connected that. And the on state. Filter low. Seems to be working. back to this after I have a sip and maybe get another filter for my suit okay hydrated and uh, new filter in place let's get some more of this set up definitely need a reader for this button and a writer to activate the furnace Cable too. I need to name that. <laughs> My labeler's battery has died.
There we go. Not on. There we go. Well, we can avoid that sort of confusion. us a uh, window kit here. The no walls left. I have to build the other one too.
about this, we'll just read off of that switch. And right to the light. import slot quantity which is currently zero This is going to write the count to this. I'm going to need that space for a chip thing. We'll come back to that. This slot reader reads the quantity in the import slot. This logic writer takes that and writes it to the setting variable on this LED display. Jetpack critical. 
out of nitrogen again. Another slot reader. Furnace import slot. I'm going to read the prefab hash from that. Now that we have that set up, we can go ahead and get our data disk and set that. it is. Now we can test these real quick. Drop four iron in there. see what it is, how many there are. fourth one went. That's okay. So, the last thing left to do is to set up our furnace automation. We'll take a look at what we have over here. We recall we read the quantity in the import slot, and then we wrote that quantity just straight to the activate uh, parameter on the furnace.
we read the import slot count. We write it to the arc furnace. And the activate value. Let me double check our previous build. This one that wrote from the activate button, which we've already done. This one we still need to do for the vent and the sensor. We should be good as far as automation on the activation. Let's test it out. Also need to read the pressure. I have one too few chips. Well, let's run grab a sip of water, maybe a bite to eat, and another logic IO. So I'm not sure if I miscounted the number of chips I needed or if I did my test build differently somehow. But we definitely need to uh, read the pressure off of that sensor.
Oh. I forgot to wear those in. Okay, let's try one more time. So this is going to read the pressure from the sensor. going to read the value from this chip and it's going to write it to the vent. And one last thing we need to do. Set the vent inward. Now it's ready. Now we'll surely be adding lighting to this later, and we'll probably put a light switch in here somewhere, but for now we'll cover it all up. This should be good to go, we'll test it shortly. And we're going to leave this exposed as it is. For now. Yes. 
am skipping the roof for now. May end up doing something up there. I'm not sure. I think that's got this portion pretty much finished. is one of the things about doing double windows like this is sometimes you can't interact with the inside window unless you completely remove the other one first. simple. easy. Okay, let's do a final test. Hunger critical. 
gonna disconnect this pipe. I'm gonna disconnect this other pipe. Now we can use our tablet to check and see what we have in our pipes. We have three things we can't smelt, two things we can, and some oxide. Finish our cosmetics. Oh, and the door. Let's give it a test. There's our unsmeltables. Our smelter, uh, smeltables. Got uh, hot waste in here, but that was shared before. Guess I should have thought about that. And we've got some nitrogen and oxygen from that oxide. So yeah, everything seems to be in order. Let's patch this up. in. So there we have it. Got automated smelting and eventually this will all feed into some storage system and maybe we'll automate that too. But for now I think it's time to go have us a tomato and uh, maybe I'll catch you guys next time. I appreciate everybody that stopped in and watched, and I really appreciate all of the positive, supportive comments that I've gotten. So I appreciate all of all of you guys hanging out and building with me. You guys have a good one, and I'll see you next time.